So now I want to uh, show you how to access uh, private files using pre-signed URL. Um, but just before we get to that, I figured it, this is a good opportunity to learn how to use the uh, CLI for S3. And um, we'll work our way to a pre-signed URL. So here I have my terminal open and I already have um, the AWS CLI installed on my computer here. So what we're going to do first is just list all the buckets within our AWS account. So we can do AWS S3 LS. LS stands for list. And then what it's going to do is we're going to see that uh, single bucket that we do actually have here. And if we wanted to see the contents of it, we could just type AWS S3 LS and then provide the bucket name. And then it's going to show it, us its content, which is a single folder. And then if we wanted to see within that folder, you kind of get where we're going here. We can uh, put that on the end there and hit enter. OK, and then we're going to see all our files. So that's uh, how easy it is to use LS. You're going to notice over here, they do have a, a very uh, a slightly different syntax here, which is the uh, using the S3 um, uh, protocol here in the front. Uh, this is uh, sometimes is needed for certain commands, which we're going to find out here with CP uh, in a moment, but not all commands require it. Okay. Like, so for instance, in LS, we have omitted um, that protocol there. But uh, yeah, moving on to copying files, uh, which CP stands for, we can um, download objects to and from our, our desktop here. So let's go ahead and actually go download uh, Barkley from our bucket here. So I'm just going to clear this here and type AWS S3 uh, CP. And we're going to use that protocol. We definitely have to use it for CP or we'll error out and we'll do exam pro 000 um, enterprise enterprise D here. Um, and then it's going to be Barclay, okay? And uh, we're just going to want to download that uh, that fellow there to our desktop, okay? And then we're just going to hit enter there. Um, and it's just complaining because I typed it in manually and I have a spelling mistake. We need an R uh, there, and it should just download that file. Great. So if we go check our desktop. There we go. We've downloaded a file from our S3 uh, bucket. Now, if we want to upload a file, so down in here, um, I have a, an additional file here called Q, and I want to get that into my bucket uh, via the CLI. It's going to be the same command. We're just going to do it in the reverse order here. So we're going to do AWS S3 CP, and we're first going to provide the file locally we want to upload here, and that's going to be uh, enterprise D uh, Q.jpg. Um, and we're going to want to send that to S3. So we have to uh, specify the protocol of the bucket name, uh, the folder here that it's going to be in, Enterprise D. Make sure you don't have spelling mistakes this time. And we're just going to put Q.jpg, OK? And we're going to uh, send that there to S3. And you can see it's uploaded. We're going to uh, refresh. And there it's been added uh, to our S3 bucket. Great. So. Uh, now we know how to list things and upload or download things from S3. And now we can move on to pre-signed URL. So we saw earlier that uh, with data, we had access um, to uh, data here because he was public. So if we were to click this fellow here, uh, we can access him, right? But let's say we wanted to access a uh, queue that we just uploaded, right? And so uh, by default, uh, they are private. Okay, so if I was to open this, um, I'm not going to be able to see it. It's access denied, which is a good, good, uh, um, uh, a good and sane default. But let's say I wanted to give someone temporary access, and this is where pre-signed URLs come. So pre-signed URLs, what it's going to do, it's going to generate a URL with the credentials that we need to uh, be able to tempor temporarily access it. Okay. So if I were to uh, uh, copy this AWS S3 pre-signed URL here, um, well, we'll just type it out because it's not a big deal here. And we're going to uh, act, uh, try to get access to um, uh, this this Q file here. So we're going to want to do Enterprise D, uh, and we're going to say Q.jpg, and we're going to put an expires on there. Expires like by default, I think it's like an hour or something, uh, but we want it to expire after 300 seconds. Um, so people like these aren't these links aren't staying around. They're again they're temporary, right? And I'm just going to hit enter there. Um, and I've uh, made a mistake. I actually forgot to write the word pre-sign in there. Okay. What it's going to do, it's going to spit back a, a URL. And so if we were to take this URL, right, and then supply it up here, uh, now we actually have access. So that's a way for you to provide temporary access to private files. This is definitely a use case that you'd have if, let's say, you had um, paid content behind, uh, like, in a web application uh, that you'd have to sign up to gain access. And this is how you uh, give them temporary access to whatever file they wanted. Um, and I just wanted to note, and I think this is the case where if we were to actually uh, open this here, so again, if we have this URL that has the access ID, et cetera, up there, but if we were to open it up um, via this tab, I think it does the exact same thing. 
So it has a security token here. So I guess maybe it's not exactly the same thing, but I was hoping maybe this was actually also using a pre-signed URL here. But anyway, the point is, is that if you want to access temporary files, you're going to be using pre-signed URLs.